Well, welcome to the emergency press conference episode of The Observation. It is a State of the Union on crypto today because it is potentially one of the bloodiest days in crypto that I have ever seen. But before we get into the show, we got a shout out to our sponsors, Cash App. Cash App, when personal finance meets your funds and the stuff that matters, that's money, that's Cash App. And when you use my code Aubrey, you'll get $15 in free money when you sign up. So use my code. And now we can get into the show. We don't usually record today, but we had to get into the studio. And today I had to bring off the bench Josh Kale, like the vegetable, uh, my producer, and Maddie Zhao. And there's just so much to unpack that I wanted to not just unpack it by myself, but wanted to bring in Josh also. Pleasure to be here. I'm happy to be talking. Thanks for coming. Back. Josh has been on the show one other time. I have. This is number I, two for me. <laughs> I, had, I had to sit him out for a little bit. I'm just glad to, I'm off the bench. Yeah. Back now, in front of the now camera. Now you're back in. <laughs> Okay, so people are seeing the markets are crashing today, but it's all because of one reason, and it's FTX is insolvent, um, and there were rumors about this, and I kind of want to backtrack what happened, because we saw it coming, we saw the signs. We saw the signs, we didn't know what was coming, but there were definitely signs showing that something was brewing, something wasn't great. Yes, and so just, I want to go, overall, what happened today was... It, it was rumored, like we had heard earlier last week on Wednesday, Coindesk had um, basically put out an article that there were discrepancies in the filings from mm -hmm. FTX. Um, uh, we'll get into that. But basically, Binance has now jumped in the ring. CZ has jumped in, and he's basically saying, like, we're going to buy you guys out. And so Binance would then own FTX. And FTX, if you aren't aware, is one of the largest crypto exchanges. Um so yeah, that, that all happened in like hours. Yeah. <laughs> it all happened so quick. We woke up this morning, none of this had happened. Okay, so let's go back and talk about how this happened, how it, how it broke mm. out. So we, we said Wednesday, and honestly, I had a friend share this with me and there was sort of this like, look at this, like look in this mm. direction. Something doesn't look right here. And people were all looking at it. Mm -hmm. And that was last Wednesday. But that no was one six was days ago. Talk, like, it felt like crypto Twitter was silent on it. And usually they jump all over this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a scary thing and it's it's big to the size where you wouldn't think that it's even possible. Like that's why I think yeah. a lot of people weren't worried because, because like obviously that's not true. Like we trust these people. They they manage money very well. Well, it's the whole too big to fail thing and it's mm -hmm. like a bank run. Once there is fear in the markets or fear that in, like a self-custody on a CFI company, it's you're almost done for anyways because everyone's going to panic and it's a bank run. It's yeah. the same thing reinvented in a different way. He was so big. Like this was the guy that bailed out people who got wrecked in Luna. Yes. Like Sam was like the yes. guy. He is the he whale. He was the savior. Yeah, he was the savior. During and the, the awful summer that was. Mm. So surely the savior of the last fallout wouldn't be the person to create this next one, but here we are. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Okay, yes. so just a backtrack of who is Sam Bankman Fried? You might have heard of him. And people usually refer to him as SBF if you're like new to crypto. Mm -hmm. um, but Sam Bankman Fried basically made all his money through arbitrage trading. Yes. Yeah. So and Sam's, he's also my age. Which is crazy. Which bothered me for a while. He was much wealthier than you, but after today. I think <laughs> I'm wealthier than SBF now. <laughs> you got a fighting chance. No. Um, but okay. So basically, if you were around for crypto this summer, I'm sorry, but number two, <laughs> like, when Celsius had the fallout, when Terra Luna had the fallout, when BlockFi was falling apart, Sam Bankman-Fried was there trying to save the market mm -hmm. and be the hero. And he was everyone's favorite person um, for, for a little bit of time. And now he's like fallen from grace. He has an Icarus moment, you know? Yeah, a little too close to the sun. He became the main character for too long. And yeah. that's what happens to all the main characters in crypto. <laughs> Okay, so let's so let's go back. Sorry, I, I'm not explaining this as well as I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the to FTX token and how this actually happened. Um, or Sam and his role in FTX. So Sam is actually the founder and CEO of yes. FTX. He started it. So I think people are confused of like FTX and Alameda. And mm -hmm. the truth is they're very much like intertwined. The way I see it is Alameda is kind of like the prop trading arm of FTX. Yeah. So Sam Bankman-Fried actually started with Alameda and then he went on to found FTX. Um, and there was too much of a vested interest between the prop trading firm and the actual centralized yeah. exchange. So he disconnected, even though everyone kind of knows there's a lot of ties between the two. Yes. And that's kind of what got him in trouble today. Yeah. Um, and so when we talk about tokens, like the FTX token, obviously, was supposed to be this like utility token. And you see that uh, a lot of times in different crypto projects. Um, 
And it was supposed to be like lower trading fees if you held FTX token and things like that. But the problem is, is when these tokens then become sort of like a real asset, mm-hmm. um, you can use that as like, it basically can go wrong. Number one, because FTX token was illiquid. Yes. Um, and that was, and that was two of thirds of basically what they were holding. Yeah. So in that leaked document that came out last Wednesday, it showed that I believe FTX held like two points or Alameda held two point something billion dollars worth of FTT tokens. Yes. When the total circulating supply was three point something billion, which basically made them illiquid. You can't sell yeah. that much onto a market without sending it to zero. Totally. So FTX and Sam created basically magic internet money that they printed. Yeah. They borrowed against it through their trading prop arm and that got them into a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, what, what blows my mind is like, I hate feeling stupid and being like, it's too big to fail. But if in FTX's heyday, mm-hmm. um, and if we go back to the last cycle, FTX was like nothing, obviously, because it was sort of born out of this last cycle. Yeah, very much so. Um, and it was really like the Binance's, the Kraken's Coinbase of the mm-hmm. world that were pushing forward. Um, and then basically Sam came at, came out of nowhere. And I think this is an important point in crypto because the higher you climb, it's almost like the faster you fall or like it, it should be, there's just no way that, that, that can't end badly. But like, we all really were backing Sam for mm. a long time. And funny enough, CZ was actually the first person to back Sam. Yeah. He incubated yeah, yeah. FTX. And now we're back around. And now, it's funny. Sam's tweet when he spoke about like CZ buying them out, he said like Binance was their very first and the very last investor. So it came full circle, which was <laughs> kind of wild. Kind of funny to say Very that. funny. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I guess the crazy thing here is that there's no actual, right now it's like a letter of intent to purchase um, basically all the tokens. Yes. Yeah, right? Important to note, it's not official. They haven't been acquired yet, yeah. but there is a letter of intent. Which this makes CZ like basically the man now. He's got all the leverage in the world. Because you don't know who CC is. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, I'm just who's trying CZ? to like explain it if you've never, if you're just fresh in the gates. Um, CZ is one of the richest, is the richest crypto person in the world. Uh, he's up there for sure. He probably is the wealthiest. I think yeah. so, yeah. He's got to be amongst like the top 10 in the world. I actually met sure. him one time in uh, in Singapore. That's pretty years cool. Years ago. Shang Peng, Shang Pao Zeng, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. But he is the uh, yeah, CEO of Binance, which is the biggest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Yes. So what CZ said today was that because there has been so many C5 failings um, that he wanted to basically create this like proof of reserves mm-hmm. process where then you could see what any centralized exchange has on their sp- sheet, whatever. Which um, feels like that's the th- way it always should be. Like who gave centralized exchanges permission to just go against everything that crypto stands for with the transparent This is, this is what drives ledger. me crazy. It's like people in crypto be like, wouldn't ever, isn't everything super transparent mm-hmm. anyway? It should be. Considering that most cryptocurrencies aren't considered assets, they're not like prone to the regulation that other exchanges get. So yeah. not only are they allowed to hide it, but they don't have to report anything yeah, to, which, they don't so, have to go through the due diligence that other exchanges do. So, which now just makes me think regulation is coming so badly. And, and like, is that even a bad quickly. thing? Like or, that's- Sorry, regulation is coming very quickly, mm. um, which is also funny because um, SBF was on Bankless talking to Eric Voorhees last week, and he's kind of had his like fall from grace moment. And honestly, I think SBF, you always, people always come into this space for the for the right reasons, I think. Mm-hmm. And then things get wild and out of hand. Yeah. Well, could you imagine going from zero to one of the biggest crypto influencers in the world in three years? He was like one of the youngest billionaires, <laughs> almost twenty billion dollars net worth. It's that does that changes someone. It does, and. Can we talk about, there was an article or the, he was on the cover of like Fortune or something recently. It was like the next Warren Buffett. Wild. Okay, so why is SPF controversial? Guy is gotten into um, a lot of like political donations, which is not very crypto-y in the sense that a lot of crypto people are anarchists or like libertarians, um, but they don't, usually want to get political, but SBF notably gave about 50 million to midterm elections. Which is the second largest democratic supporter behind Soros of 120 million. He, he did do, he did give bipartisan donations, but yeah, in terms of like donors on the, on the democratic side, mm-hmm. he did give, he's one of the largest. Second um, biggest one, which is wild because you don't really see that from people in crypto. Or 
people so young sometimes, I think. Mm, and he's too. relatively young. And so um, that was notable. And he had a promise to put up $1 billion for the 2024 election against Trump um, <laughs> if Trump then got in, involved and then he backtracked it. So there were signs that this was coming. And I think that, you know, you like sometimes in a relationship or in some sort of thing, you just don't want to believe that when the signs are there. And I think one of the signs that were there was Brett Harrison, the president of FTX left. I thought that was fishy. I really like Brett. I think he's great. Mm. And I was like, hmm, he's leaving. There were two people that left. And then Sam Trabuco, Sam Trabuco from Alameda left. He was the CEO and I believe co-founder of Alameda. So he was kind of the guy calling the shots over there. And if anyone were to know if something was going on, it's him. Cause he was the right hand man to Sam or the other Sam SBF. And he was the guy that ran all the books at Alameda. Just so wild. Like how many people knew? What did they know? How many people, and how and how soon did they know? And how certain were they? Like for them to leave a career spot so prominent and just disappear. Ama like you don't step down as president of FTX. I'm sorry. It's a big deal. In such a cushy spot. I mean, to do something else, unless ever, I always, we actually talked about him stepping mm -hmm. down on the show. I was like, I was going to go start a fund or something. But when I did see the announcement break on Twitter, I was like, that's weird. And that's part of the, the reasons why it's so important for CZ to be transparent about finances so that like people can observe this for themselves. It's it's unfair to the people who leave their money on these exchanges. Okay, but we also don't know what's on Binance's balance sheet. We don't know what that looks like. There's <laughs> no, yet, like there's no Not transparency yet. there. So it's all just, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it, it's, I mean, if you want to do the, the C5 versus DeFi thing, this this shows the power of transparent exchanges. I think this makes everyone more bullish on DeFi. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think explaining, sorry, for people who are new, centralized finance versus decentralized finance. Um, centralized finance being like your Coinbase's, your FTX's, your Kraken's, um, sort of like anything that you could download on, as an app or just like if you looked up like a crypto exchange, you'd probably find a centralized um, exchange. Um, decentralized DeFi summer basically right before the, the last cycle became very popular, but people were like, no, no to DeFi. Mm -hmm. And I almost think that in some ways, it I don't know if it was a fear of like what could happen, like you'd get more wrecked. I think everyone's gotten more wrecked on centralized exchanges Yes, because there's, there's risk vectors with both. I think with DeFi, I think that- But it's a, a little bit on you though. It's not like you're wrecked because of other people's um, negligence. Yes. It's wrecked on your negligence. You control much more of the risk in DeFi because with DeFi- Yeah, you the, wreck yourself. The, the exchange doesn't wreck you Most as much. times, yeah. Because the primary risk factor in, in DeFi is hacks, which happens yeah. quite a bit, like smart contract exploits. Yeah. DeFi has built protocols on chain that are completely permissionless, completely trustless. And when developers build protocols like that, sometimes there are exploits where money can get taken. But in exchange for that, you get trustless systems that don't fail because they're mathematically built to not fail versus central exchanges where your trust is on people and it's very opaque and you can't really see where your money's going, who it's being lent out to, and you just have to trust the word of the people who you're giving your money to. And that's the risk factor that really wrecked a lot of people today. I think this, so this is talking about just crypto generally, but I think if we talk about Bitcoin, and I think a lot of Bitcoiners are probably secretly rejoicing right now hmm. because it's not that you want to see people get hurt. You don't want to see institutions fail. Like that's not a good thing for Bitcoin either. But what I will say is that there are a lot of people that see things like an FTX token and it's like, oh, that's just basically thin air. That's just, that's money out of thin air, that magic internet money that did nothing for you. Um, and at least people on the Bitcoin side feel validated in the fact that they're not part of the shitcoin casino. Yeah, definitely. And that they custody their own tokens mostly. So they're not really reliant on the trust of others. And that's, yeah. that's a big thing. And, and central exchanges really exist to make it easier to onboard people, which I do like. Yeah. But the fact that those people are not educated enough to learn how to custody their coins and now they're ex like exposed to risk like this, it kind of sucks. It does suck. Um, I think the big takeaway is that people should self-custody themselves, but I obviously themselves, but I, I feel like Bitcoiners are doing that more almost. I don't know, potentially. I think a lot of, there's like a lot of room for people to leave things on exchanges. Mm -hmm. And that also goes back to, it's like, we're so early where people just aren't educated about like a hardware wallet. And I don't think people want to be. And I think that's why they leave their money on exchanges and that's when they get wrecked and then they don't get involved again. 
I would say it's probably more power users versus just Bitcoin users of people who do custody, like people who really understand how it works, but it's not yeah. easy. And there's, there's no systems put in place that make it easy for the average person to self custody. I think Bitcoiners are the most vocal about not your uh, keys, not your coin. They're definitely vocal. They're like the most that say, <laughs> I don't think crypto people say it as much. Probably. I think a lot of the principles apply, but in like on the ERC 20 side or just the DeFi side in general, I think it's just much less convenient to self custody because you're constantly moving around your tokens, interacting with protocols and hardware wallets create another layer of friction. Yeah. Because most of the long term people who, who really believe in like property rights and um, freedom are here for the long term. They're not trying to make a quick buck in a casino. And so they are self custodying and they are putting their money on a hardware wallet because they think they don't even care about moving that shit around. And today's a perfect example of why that's so important to do. Yeah. So, and it kind of returns back to the, the core thesis of a lot of cryptocurrencies is just like self custody, transparent transactions, all on chain activity. And like th these centralized exchanges are just basically a Web3 version of the same type of exchanges we've had with stocks. Um, and they don't really like harness any of the new innovations that blockchain enables. So hopefully this pushes more people over to that and accelerates that side of things. But I think people don't even realize the difference between CFI and DeFi right now. Like no one's like, oh, I, like I'm operating on a DEX. I'm operating on like Coinbase. Mm. Like they don't see that and because they don't know that. And so they lump crypto in with all, it's all it's a scam. And that's a big, that's a big problem and a big narrative problem for Bitcoin, I think, to get wrapped up in with crypto. Um, and then literally everything is down right now. Can you pull up like what the, I don't even know what. Yeah, what it's a bloody day today. It's it's down it's a bloody tremendously. Day. Like, and all the markets. Yeah, Bitcoin's down 12.5%. Ethereum's down 18%. Yeah. Uh, FTT, which is the exchange token of FTX, is down 80% today. So that yeah. tells you how things are going. Yeah. So um, what do we think, CZ? Do you think do we think that CZ actually goes through with it? I there's the way I see it is there's two options. There's one where he just he does buy them out, or there's one where he slowly just bleeds them out because they have no power anymore. He's like a mastermind, by he the way. He really is. It's incredible how he played this, where he So for people who Playing don't know the chess. backstory, yeah, he was one of the earliest found or er, investors in FTX. So Binance and CZ owned a lot of FTX tokens. Yeah. And when they found out that things were not very good on the Alameda side, CZ publicly said that he intended to sell all of their tokens. And that type of sell side pressure on a token that doesn't have a lot of daily volume pushes the price down a lot. And that added stress on FTX is what sent them overboard for sure. And it kind of yeah. created a cascade selling effect where everyone started to panic. And they're thinking, wow, if this rich guy knows something, I should probably follow him. Yeah. And they did. And now he looks like a genius because he sold off the FTT tokens and now he could buy them at either a discounted rate or at zero. Like SBF and FTX aren't really in a good spot to do anything because they don't have the funds to pay back their, um, yeah. their users. So yeah. if they can't pay back their users, CZ is all the power in the world unless someone else wants to step in. But I don't know if anyone else wants to get involved in this. I don't think anyone does. And I, I, and so if we go back to the Super Bowl of last year, there was a lot of celebrities involved. You had Matt Damon, Crypto.com and Matt Damon involved. Uh, Giselle and Tom Brady were obviously doing an ad for FTX. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady is an ambassador to FTX and Giselle is in, in charge of their environmental arm. Uh, not sure how that's working out post-divorce. But that being said, there was $50 million spent on that FTX ad. Um, and so I was thinking about this today hmm. and I was like, all over the tweets, what did Giselle know and how soon did she know it? Right. Because yep. she, tough, tough month for Tom Brady. If we're thinking about it, went through a divorce really rough, uh, lost the Steelers. That's tough. tough they're, 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 uh, and I'm saying that because the Steelers record is awful. So it's just <laughs> embarrassing this season. Usually an okay team. Um, and and now uh, probably not doing too great with his equity in FTX. No, no, that's that's probably good as worthless. And I would imagine a lot of other funds who invested are marking it off as zero in their books now. And then also, but also just like reputationally. like Tough luck. The month has been tough for Tom. Mm -hmm. um, but at least he'll always have the old pig skin. And he had a great win this weekend. You got to take your wins when you can get them, you know? You got to take them when you get them. Yeah. But um, I do think Giselle has, like, some witch powers, man. I think that she she knew something. 
her and the other guys that quit, her and Brett that quit, and the other Sam that quit, they were all colluding together. Yeah. They knew. They're all sailing off so on the yacht. This is an opportunity. You can come on to the observation and talk about this and what happened. It's a safe space. We will let you to talk about these falling outs with SBF and Tom and hang on the couch. Totally, it's totally. Comfy. Yeah. C come on in. Share your story. Um, or she's casting spells on this whole thing. And she's really behind it. Speaking of casting spells. Or, or she divorced what? I was going to say. Well, today, um, this morning was the blood moon, which is just um, an interesting so thing. So your friend Marin. Marin did predict. We should get her on this. the show to, to really Marin like. Marin would be good. So yeah, Aubrey has a friend Marin who is, she is very into astrology. And in January of this year, I believe it was, she called the two worst recessionary weeks in crypto. And she was off by a week on each one. One of them was this week. Yep. And coinciding with the blood moon. So listen, I don't I don't believe in this stuff necessarily, but I don't know. No, I believe it. We're, we're getting wrecked pretty I bad, it. so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to change my mind here. I believe it. Okay, something... Hold on, let me pull this down. <sighs> something that um, I've been thinking about is Block 5. If we don't remember, because it's been mm -hmm. a long... It's been a long summer, a long year, guys. Real tough. Feels like a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> So BlockFi was this like lending also centralized platform that internally the books were not good. And I actually knew that from just crypto chat. I've heard that like things were kind of internally mismanaged. So it's also the one that pump pumped so hard. The whole like BlockFi thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not the best look. Not the best look. Um, so BlockFi, uh, SPF bailed out BlockFi mm -hmm. and was trying and like everyone looked at him as a hero. But now BlockFi, I'm wondering where BlockFi stands in this because basically all that equity that they would have got, like FTX token, like it's means nothing. Now. Yeah, it's worthless. It's worthless. All so BlockFi is worthless unless like Binance decides to buy BlockFi too, which I doubt they're going to do. Probably not. They're out. So that's you, tough. You got to wonder what the contagion effects of this are. Because yeah. when, when like Celsius went down and BlockFi went down, it took, or I guess those were the result of Luna failing. So, and that took weeks to happen. So what happens now, weeks after this, what is the second order effect? We've of, been talking about this. I, I've been saying this on the pod. We have not seen Max Payne. Now I think we're getting closer. I think gotta we're be getting, getting close. closer. I mean, today is definitely a step in the right direction if you want pain. No, <laughs> I, think, sure. I think we're, we're very close. Okay. There's the also, other, there's one more thing that I was interested in. What happens to Sam's personal balances? Because he owns... 7.2% of Robinhood he bought privately. Does he? He does. He bought, I believe, last year, but I know it's about 7.2%. What happens with, with Sam and with Robinhood and those types of well, things? Well, how do we know Sam's not going to jail? Yeah, it, it creates... A, oh, that'd be crazy. I, wow. I Imagine the poster child of crypto in well, jail. There's there's a chance that he does um, because I think that you that they could figure out... you know, They could frame it anyway, but I, it's going to be very hard for him to, to not be in, in some sort of trouble like yeah. like they would call it securities or like you mean, mm. like they're they're gonna find some way they probably can if they want to um because yeah i don't know i i think that that would be so wild though from like basically funding all these politicians and everyone he was uh, the guy the effective altruist yeah the guy who was just he was a people's people well, a let's people's talk person about yeah let's talk we can talk about the effective altruism that's an interesting take so Sam has been talking about this phrase effect of altruism and he's mm -hmm. been touting it a lot um, just about on his like political donation side and this kind of the way he combated uh, do donations. And what would you, for people who don't know, what would you define effective altruism as? It's a loose term that means nothing. It is. It's like... My perception a, go ahead. is it's just that their intention is to give back a lot of the wealth they create to make the world a better place instead of using it for their own narratives and their own wants yeah but like effective altruism really should be like not just even monetary like funding and donating to like super PACs that's mm -hmm. not really effective altruism in my opinion like that's just the old system right yeah I suppose what do you see it as I think true effective altruism would be like donating to grassroots donating your time mm. uh things like that but you know um it didn't seem to turn out the right way. And and, and I, it's hard for me to be like, did SPF actually have good intent or was he 
trying to further his mission and narrative. Like it's hard to tell. Like, did he use the the altruistic view as a crutch for the taking of so much money from others? Did he use because, the token as taking of so much money from others? Yeah, and 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 hiding it the behind. Same thing. Well, yeah, exactly, and hiding it behind that that mask. Like, oh, I'm here to give back money to the people. Me making profit is fine because I give it back. Yeah, well, there was those articles. It was like this billionaire wants to give away all his wealth, and that's very much like a billionaire narrative for a lot of people. There's a lot of tech founders that have tried to do that and given away a lot of their money. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Gates does that, you know. Um, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, Mackenzie, tries to do that, um, but I. <sighs> and also, they they're much further in their careers than he is. Yeah. This is a very young person who. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying I wouldn't be like if I meet a nine year old mm -hmm. man, not <laughs> not old enough to be making these kinds of decisions. It's it's gotta be they're, a lot of responsibility. Oh crap, I just doxed my age. Can we bleep that? Um, <laughs> um okay. So one of the first things that I thought of mm -hmm. when this broke was China. It's kind of scary. First, they got TikTok. Now they have the by far the biggest crypto exchange. So Binance today, as of the recording, did about $44 billion in volume. Yep. Coinbase was number two at about four and a half. FTX was number three at four. So Binance was already 10x daily volumes of anyone else. And they absorbed the third largest exchange. So yeah. they have a lot of power. Yeah. And if we're talking about centralized um, exchanges, I was like, basically, China owns crypto, but they've owned about 60% of centralized exchanges now that they've like gobbled up um, or crypto on those exchanges. And so that's a, that's a lot. Um, yeah. And a lot what, behind does that, closed what does doors. that mean? Okay. Yeah. And we, we go back, we don't know what their balance sheet looks like. We don't know what it's a, Binance is a private company. And right? also, and they have separate entities too. They have Binance US. They have like, yep. they, and they can kind of move money around. I don't think anyone's talking about this and people are kind of afraid to honestly because you don't want to get blacklisted well do you remember what happened with jack ma who is another yeah, huge chinese founder he disappeared for a little so you never really know a chinese-based company what's actually happening behind the scenes and that's something that does scare me too yeah and i think that everyone should be sort of afraid of that and so my whole thing was like it's brian armstrong versus cz at this point those are certain it's the, it's the yeah. rocky movie that you didn't mm. ask for <laughs> the american versus China. <laughs> yeah. And and China's got quite a big lead right now. They're really big and they and Binance is a great service that works really well and they're they're absorbing everything. Yeah. Now my question is what happens I don't like the like um like what's the word? Consolidation, I guess, yeah. of all these different exchanges. I think that's bad. I think so too, but in the same sense it does push people towards like off exchanges and on chain. So it does push users to go to DeFi. I don't think it does. I think it fucking gets everyone out because they're like, fuck this. I think crypto needs a full rebrand. I think today was one of the worst days I've ever seen in crypto, worse than this summer. And I don't even think we've seen the full effects of it. Like I'm not even on Twitter right now. I wonder what the hell's going on mm -hmm. because I've taken some time off because <laughs> I was on it too much today. But I actually don't think we've seen the full effects. I don't think so either. I think it's very much a Luna you situation. You seem happy. Right? Like you're like, I don't either. It's fine. Well, it's... I mean, like crypto, if you're don't here, you think crypto as a brand has taken a hit? Horrible, yes. But if if you are here, like this just makes this space more anti-fragile. So if you're here for a very long time, I think clearing out all of this stuff that doesn't work in these broken systems force all the systems to get better. So if you're here for, for five to 10 years, breaking Luna, breaking FTX, breaking these like these systems, hacking into smart contracts and protocols, you expose all the flaws in the system so you have time to build back better and stronger. So over time, this should be a net positive, we hope. Um, but it's it's certainly a bummer today, considering Sam is basically the face in terms of regulation of crypto as well. So this slows things down a lot. This but, pushes okay, but I do think before, like during the Mt. Gox hack that happened mm -hmm. back in, I think, 2013, um, that was debilitating for crypto, if you don't remember. Yeah. Like it was, I, I don't even know how many, was it billions that were taken off at exchange? But Yeah, well, um, many billions at today's value is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, at today's valuations, it's like unquantifiable what like the number is. At the time, I, I don't know, have the numbers at the time, but um, basically people were like, that was like a ground zero moment. Like we're never coming back from that. We obviously have. I think the difference here is that less, fewer people knew about crypto at that time to, for it to hit like, regulators weren't, they were always watching, but it wasn't, 
2013, it's like a lifetime ago in crypto and finance yeah, and almost tech. a decade. Yeah, and so like now in almost 2023, we have a similar fallout with FTX, one of the largest exchanges, um, not a hack, but basically an insolvency. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that because we have Tom Brady next to SBF, next to Giselle, and there's actual more spotlight on it. I think it actually is a, is a worse event than Mt. Gox because there's so much attention from regulators, from mainstream people that would want to get involved. Mm -hmm. Crypto as a name right now, like as a brand, not like a no one wants to fucking touch it anymore. No, no, not at all. It's, it's bad. And it definitely sets the space back and regulators are going to be looking at this and making an example of this. Um, but in the same <sighs> sense, it does unlock a new standard in terms of centralized exchanges where now uh, Binance is verifying on chain the amount of coins and tokens and, and dollars well, that they're they hold. going to they're going to and then if if binance does it hopefully that sets the standard for other exchanges going forward so we don't run into these problems anymore of people secretly hiding and over leveraging on their money i mean i just don't trust china and if china's involved with binance like and and they're even if they do a proof of reserves mm -hmm. like yeah it, it's scary you, you always got to question the motives behind it um but it is a step in the right direction where now an Alameda FTX situation can no longer exist because if you do mess with the user's funds, they can see it on chain. Hopefully this will be like the standard which, in which everyone. That's what you would themselves. hope. Exactly. Yeah. And, and hopefully other exchanges will follow, including Coinbase. Yeah, it would be cool if Coinbase was like, we also. Here's our going, cold wallets yeah. and here's our signature proving that we own these. And here's the wallet that they're held on on chain. And yeah. that's a really nice precedent going forward to stop this from happening. Because the transparency is the only protection you so have. I think we've seen so much darkness. I'm feeling like a little bit of a pessimist today. I think we've seen too much hurt for, it's like, okay, we've now done these things. It's almost like, shouldn't we have already been doing these things? It hurts to see because you, you see all of the brilliant people and all the innovation that happens in the space. And it's really great work. But the poster children of crypto are just getting knocked off one by one by one. And it, it hurts the space a lot. It really is it's tough to see. Yeah. Because um, a lot of people get hurt yeah. really bad who don't deserve it because they just don't understand how it works well enough. It feels like a few steps forward and then like multiple steps back. A lot of steps Every backward. time. Mm -hmm. It's really frustrating. Um, okay, let's talk about... <laughs> um, Doquan came on up <laughs> only today. This is great. Oops. Doquan and uh, Martin Shkreli and... All the one, criminals. All yeah. the criminals all were the basically criminals. on up only today, um, which we don't know who even like is the sponsor of up only anymore because it, it was, was ftx but prior to that i remember messaging kobe one time and i was like um back when Blockfolio was a sponsor but then ftx acquired ftx was acquired and everything back in the day yep um and i was like so who's your sponsor now and he was like oh i guess it's ftx but then they were like is binance <laughs> a sponsor now that's pretty wild i don't know but it's it was just a like great those show things gobbling up it's like those hippos that just gobble so up now who, who gobbles up binance is there anyone bigger what happens if they go China. down <laughs> China, is that how the nation state takes honestly, over? Honestly, I kind of feel like national warfare through like digital money is going to happen. And I think it China is trying to like get in front of it. How crazy would that timeline be? So now China owns the largest exchange. Um, China's responsible for a lot of things that have happened in the past few years. They want to stray like, away from the US dollar as the global reserve currency. I don't know. Dude, China's playing... Like, I, I think that we underestimate China. And I... My tweet today about um, CZ was like, he was playing chess. I don't think if we even made the point of basically after the Super Bowl, he tweeted out that he didn't hmm. do, they did not do a Super Bowl ad. They were like, we're hiring 2,000 employees, um, come work. For, Head down building. Us. Like, it wasn't flashy. Yeah, I'll even read it out. It was, and so when I saw the news break today, I, like you, you have to respect as a tech CEO that doesn't get emotional in a bull market because really, all these CEOs get like that. And um, let's see it. He tweeted so many tweets today. <laughs> oh, wow. Busy day. My tweet, this is 4,000 now. Nice. Um, it was not easy saying no to Super Bowl ads, stadium naming rights, large sponsor deals a few months ago, but we did. Today, we are hiring for 2,000 open positions for Binance. And this is the biggest subtweet I think I've ever seen at all. He's just calling out every single exchange. Yeah, well, you got to have respect. Everyone was doing the flashy things. They had infinite money. So SBF went and bought uh, the stadium in Miami. He put yeah. his logo on every single Major League Baseball umpire shirt. Yep. He, he had the whole thing with Tom Brady and Giselle, and he started going to these parties. And Yep. Right. Didn't, and did, CZ just stayed back. He stayed he built. calm, stayed cool, stayed collected. I have a lot of respect for him. 
I mean, he won. He won fair and square. They were kind of beefing and and CZ won. SPF That's kind no of the stoicism that you need to have, though. You the un like not being emotional. And I almost feel like I don't know. I think it's hard to say that Sam was emotional because I don't think he was. I think he was an um, opportunist and was just mm. trying to come in and seize the day and try to be helpful. I genuinely don't think he's a malicious actor not by any means. I think he got too far over like in, over his head and it just was like he was just in too deep. Um, but that being said. I think that CZ, I think CZ was stoic. He realized like what was at stake and he probably had some inside information having uh, worked with FTX early sure. on and Alameda early on and being like, you know what? I'm just going to stay clear. I'm not going to do anything stupid. I'm not, we're not going to run ads. We're not going to do any of that dumb stuff. We're mm -hmm. not going to buy stadiums and we're not going to talk to celebrities. And uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a day where I basically checkmate everyone. Yeah, it's it's tough. The cyclical nature naturally allows you to put your foot off the gas. Yeah. Like when things are going so well, it seems like you can do no wrong. And and in that time, SPF seems like a genius. Yeah. But but when things are bad, this is really when it goes to show that you you are operating very tactically. You're operating a big business in a really hard industry that hasn't proven yet. And you can't make mistakes. I also think we get a bit emotional too. I think that no one is as great as they are at the top or as bad as they are at the bottom. Like that is emotional as well. Like no, sure. one, no one's too big to fail. Everyone could fail mm -hmm. at some point. And we, we've seen it happen time and time again now. And when will we learn? When will we learn? It seems like every time we do learn, but like you said, things move really fast and we have a lot of short-term memory where you can recall these events. I mean, this, I know. this is as textbook as it gets. Like you're just, you're over leveraging on funds that you shouldn't be leveraging against. And and here we are again. The point in time and time again is that everyone is over leveraged and they can, they can never pay back what they leverage and then they're, they're, they can't, everything becomes like illiquid and they're fucked. Yeah, it's always that search for, for incremental yields. Like if SBF decided, hey, maybe I don't need to 2X my money. Maybe I could just sit with what I have and build a core business that works through any type of economic situation he wouldn't have been in this problem. But that search for the, the extra 2X, the, the leveraging his that's money. That's why regulation, let's be honest, is a thing. Yeah. Because think about like triple leveraged ETFs. It's not like that. there's a point where the regulators are like, okay, that is far as you're going. Mm -hmm. You are and not- it's to protect the users. Yeah. It's to protect the people. It's because people are greedy and they're like, you should be able to make more. And it's almost like a case study of like, this doesn't usually pan out when you try to do that. Go to a casino if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not going to turn, it's not going to work out and this like way. The, the sad reality is a lot of people do view crypto just as a casino. And that's Bitcoiners partially- Bitcoiners view crypto as a casino and most people do. And I think that's the difference there. Mm -hmm. And there's real tech there, but I mean, the FTT token is the perfect example of it's, it's, well, it's utility token. there should be limits token. at least on yield. There should be limits on, on some point. Maybe on, on centralized exchanges, sure, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. On decentralized exchanges, I think like the user- Get wrecked. Yeah, like allow them, there was, like they have their own responsibility of their co tokens in their custody, let them make the decision. But on centralized exchanges where people don't necessarily understand where their money's going, who's managing it, how it's being managed, there should be rules and limits yeah, I agree on how with it that. I would, I would agree with that. I would say on centralized exchanes, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to take if it off, go, if you go have go, fun. Go have fun. <laughs> the wild, wild west of DeFi. Well, because then that assumes a certain level of understanding and responsibility. If yeah, you know enough to totally. get off the exchange, go do your thing. But if you're still on the exchange, if you're just like the average person walking down the street right yeah, outside yeah, their yeah, studio, yeah. like you don't really care. You're just like, oh, I want to buy some Bitcoin. I want to buy some Ether. And now suddenly you wake up and you can't withdraw your funds today. Totally. That sucks. Yeah. So just something to prevent that from happening it's nice. And I mean, in a way we're self-regulating now, where now Binance is, they have to make their funds transparent just to kind of set the standard until we get actual regulation to come down and say, hey, you can't do this. Like you can't have a tangent prop trading fund that you're printing imaginary tokens from and leveraging off of. That's not cool. And people knew this was happening, um, but it wasn't a widely known thing. And it wasn't something that anyone considered could actually happen until today. I honestly didn't know a lot of people that were using FTX. Personally. Um, well, what's interesting is it's actually not allowed in New York. So they don't have a bit license. Yeah. So there's FTX and there's FTX so I US. Still, I mean, I have friends on crypto all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, by volume, it's the third largest exchange, but it was one tenth of what Binance did today. Yeah.
It's a crazy Man. day. It's a crazy day. This is a historic day in crypto. Being it's in the a space. It's a lot to unpack. It's just a lot to think about because it's really, what are the implications here? That's the scary thing is what are the second order effects of this falling apart? Like what happens to Alameda now? Because yeah. they weren't bought out. And yeah. how many people were interacting with Alameda and borrowing money from them? Yeah. So they're what not, protocols? People aren't totally in the clear yet. And now Solana, who is like Sam's child, yeah. which is a huge chain. Yeah. How much of Solana does he own? It was um, quite a bit. A ton. Yeah. Like a metric ton. And they had to start selling off Solana last night to try to keep that peg of FTT at 22. So now they don't have the backing for Solana. And think about <sighs> Aptos and all these DeFi protocols that are now dying because they don't have the support of, really of Sam like and FTX. Really just of failures. It and is. It all like and it probably takes a couple weeks or months to even play out. We don't really know what's going to happen. Um, I just want to tell you what it's like working in crypto too <laughs> when this news breaks because I was on a walk today. And, you know, the rumors are swirling and you're looking, you're on Twitter, you're looking at your phone and all of a sudden you see like news break instantly. Like I saw it like seconds after mm -hmm. Sam put out his tweet. I mean, they put out the, basically the same article Yep. Um, and then Susie and you're just like. Shock, utter shock. It was one of those things that I had to reread a couple of times because I didn't really like I didn't I knew what he was saying, but I didn't want to think it was true. You just want it to work out, man. You just want it one time to not be like this. And you're just oh, like, oh God, why? Yeah, it's it's a bummer today. It's a bummer. I remember I, I read it this morning and he said, um, Binance will be our first and last investor. And I'm like, what is, what do you mean? Like, is Binance helping to bail out FTX? And then realized he bought out the whole damn company. It was just this. Wow, just salute. RIP, um, we lost a big one today. Although- there's a chance that it doesn't actually go through. It is a letter of intent. Yeah, yeah. It's not final. It's like CC just watched the painful death happen. He's got. Which, which could actually would be way worse. If he just lets them bleed out. Yeah. Well, because then that the problem there is that hurts the users. Because now the users can't withdraw. They lose all their money. I don't think CZ actually gives a fuck. He's a, he's a businessman at the end of the day. Like he could, he could help them out. But like, I think it's really. Well, even business. just tactically speaking. I do speaking, think he kind of wants to look like a hero though. Low key. He does. And I think there's a lot of value to bailing out however hundreds of thousands of people are on FTX yeah. that will then go over to Binance and be his users. That's yeah. a lot of inflows because exchanges make money by collecting fees on exchanges. Totally. So if they can collect all of the volume of FTX for pennies on the dollar, that's a big one for, for yeah, Binance. Yeah. And we were also talking about this, like Binance has their, like going back to tokens, um, Binance also has their own token but it actually does have utility to it. So I think that if you are an FTX user and you're watching this show and you're like, oh shit, this mm. is just the same situation on the other side, like it's technically not because it's a layer one. Binance does have a smart chain, which is, it's the same thing as kind of Ethereum. You can mint NFTs, like you can do whatever the fuck. There's DeFi, there's NFTs, yeah. there's all that good stuff. It has utility. And although it's largely centralized, with the nodes that the validators that run it, yeah. there is utility. FTT yeah. is strictly- Actual utility, besides yes. like, you get discounts on, on our exchange. Fees. Yeah, and at, at what point is it just, I mean, it's a casino token. People are there to speculate. They're not there because it actually adds value to their life. Most people who own FTT, I would venture to say, probably don't even trade on FTX. It's just for speculation. And that's the big difference between the two. And on the news, Binance is, is doing really well. Their token's doing great. FTT is down 80 something percent. It was at- what, what is it at now, Josh? I don't know, you can take a look. It was, it was bad. And what was very interesting to see last night is um, there are publicly traded or publicly labeled wallets that Alameda hold and that FTX own. And you could watch them trade off assets from other chains as they tried to accumulate more money to hold FTT at $22, which a lot of people presumed was the price at which they'd start to go illiquid if it went below. So if you look at the chart from last night, they were selling everything, propping up the price. And then the second they ran out of ammo to keep propping up the price, it fell 30%. Damn. Right now it's at $5.25. What is that? 525 Oh, it's back up. Um, it was down yeah, to $3. It's, it's only down 82% versus 90. <laughs> I will say, um, I was monitoring the FTX Twitter account this morning mm -hmm. because I was like, as someone who does comms, it's always interesting to me. And I pray for all the comms people out there today because that is the day. worst messaging, all of that and passing it through legal. There's a process of how all this happens, right? So there's like a war room where you're in and you're usually in there with like your legal counsel and then like the key spokespeople. So your CEO, maybe a co-founder mm -hmm. and maybe like a COO or like a chief financial officer. And you guys are basically sitting there and like, how do we message this in the best way 
and what's the tweet and here's like the blog that we're going to put out and then we just have to you just rip it and like basically like <laughs> and just, run just for, duck cover. for cover <laughs> that's kind of what happens but making sure you get it right is really hard anyways i went to the page and it was like gifts and stuff what was scary is their content per and that's different than their comms person the content person was just putting out like Nothing to see here. Yeah. We're all good, which was clearly not the case. Well, going back to the on-chain data, you can see the withdrawal addresses from FTX and yeah. they, they stopped withdrawals for about two and a half hours prior to any announcement. I, yeah. So you can see on-chain that FTX wasn't allowing people to take their money out. So you knew something was wrong, but there was two and a half, maybe three hours Another of radio CFI. silence. Another problem with CFI there. Yeah. yeah. So you, Halting people of changes. And then also Coinbase and, and uh, Kraken went down today. Mm-hmm. For some time. That's likely for just like crazy inflows and volumes yeah. and stuff. But it's it's scary because if you do have your coins on any exchange, you need to be very cognizant yes. of the risk factors. Our, our message here today is that you should get your coins off of an exchange immediately if you're watching this. Move it off. Get a hardware wallet. I wish I had affiliate links for like Ledger and Trezor, which are great brands. We'll just link them for free down in the description so that you can... Uh, check it out. There's also like cool wallet S I've kind of messed with. There's other like really interesting wallets. Pick a wallet that you trust um, from like the below. Ledger's a great one to start. I, I use, yeah. use that for, for years. And it's also fun to learn how to take custody of your coin. It's a very empowering experience yeah, yeah. when you understand the difference between public and private keys. Yeah. And you just start to learn and you, you it's important to know. Yeah, it's empowering. Yeah, it yeah. feels good to know that you own your own money and no one can take you from you. And how secure a 12 or 24 word mnemonic phrase is against any of these like attack vectors that can happen to you. Very, yeah. So it's, that's a good takeaway from today is, is learn how to custody your tokens, learn how to take control of your own money. Because that's basically why so many people are interested in this space is because it does give you the power back to the user instead of the centralized service that yeah. screwed so many people over today. And at the end of the day, if you are new to this space or you want to come into this space and you're just like, I'm not, absolutely not at this point, I think that everyone has the same long-term goal. I think how we get there is going to take a very long time. And I do think there's a lot of really good actors in this space that are trying to advance it because they believe in those principles of that you should own your own mon money. And I think a lot of DeFi allows that. But I also, I mean, I think personally, Bitcoin is the easiest route to that. Like it is the straight line to owning your own money. So if you have not gotten to crypto, this is not financial advice, but I would look at Bitcoin first before you get into anything else. But um, yeah, tough day, not your keys, not your coins, get your coins off exchanges, buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin only. Just kidding. Uh, Don't do uh, that. I can't say that. Can. <laughs> Catch up to me and mad. But did you know, Josh? Yes. That you Fill can buy Bitcoin on Cash App for as little as a dollar? Only one. Yeah. I did know that because I help record all the shows. Well, <laughs> but the people should know. And if you're a new user and they sign up for Cash App. $15. Using? Aubrey. Amazing. It. it actually is yeah. very cool. I will say I've used Cash App for, this is year seven. I used it for a very long time prior to even like Bitcoin being a thing. And they, they really are a great app. And it was funny. We filmed a video for cash app, like a man on the street last week. Yeah. We would go around and we asked people if you want like $5, do you want to double it? Give it to someone else. And people just started advertising for cash app for us. It was wild because the product it's just a genuinely good product. And that's yeah. why I feel really good about having them support our show yeah. is because I was a user far before they even came into the show's life. And so many people on the street show that time and time again, how much they like it. So the fact that now oh, it's great. you can not only bank, but like I can send you money for our Chipotle that we get every day. Yeah. Or I could also like buy Bitcoin and use the Lightning Network to transact on it and send you money very quickly. It's cool. Well, and yeah, and I also just am super happy that Cash App only really fucks with Bitcoin right now because I think where we're at in our journey is that people should start there, especially if they're on Cash App, which is just a mainstream payments app. Mm -hmm. And it should be something that people can trust and they don't need all this like education to basically get involved for owning their own money. It's great. And that's it, it, money. That's money. That's cash app. That's cash app. The simplicity to <gasps> buy your own Bitcoin, cost your own coins. I'm like so frustrated with this space. I'm going to have to like go like in one of those, what are those tanks where you desensitize? Ooh, yes. Deprivation. The deprivation, deprivation tanks. tanks yes. And like just cleanse myself. It's Ma a painful day. You know what it is? I think we should all self custody and just move, and everyone should live on the beach and just get away from all this bullshit and get away from China and just 
Yeah. No, it's, too far. Can eh, I take it too far. Maybe, but the takeaways are definitely t- take take control. Live on a beach somewhere coins. where you're free. Maybe Florida. Maybe people who live in Florida got it right. Also, does that mean FTX Arena? I was thinking about this. Do they just slap a Binance logo on top and call they it a just day? Put it over it. <laughs> they tape over it. And like, what do now all the sports partnerships, all the brand deals, like what happens to all of this stuff? I don't know. Well, those are actually like 10 year deals. I found Jeez. out through a friend like this, the crypto.com, which I heard there's a rumor that they're also not doing well. The crypto.com take over the stable center partnership was like a 10 year deal. Wow. And if that goes bad, I mean, it just would be so embarrassing if all these crypto It's not a bad stadiums, look. And it is, I do want to tell people. It's not a bad look. It is I mean, a bad sorry, look. it's a horrible look. Yeah. <laughs> It's a terrible look, but I do want people to know that like the space is generally good. And a lot of this loud stuff, but no that one's going to believe you. I know. And it's hard because a lot of the stuff does happen at a very technical level where people are building really impressive tools and really impressive protocols and projects that are going to help change a lot of people's lives. It's just, that's not what's in the headlines. And it's, it's still too challenging for most people to get there. So until we get there, it's, it's going to be a long road. Um, ahead of us and this definitely doesn't help the cause and like think like now i have to go and explain what happened today to my friends who have invested in crypto and they're like dude i can't even get my coins off the exchange like it's a bad look and it, it hurts it hurts yeah, the space you have really to explain bad it and you're like you feel stupid you do i'm like well i it's mean it's not supposed to be like this i know but it's still broken it, it's not as good as Crypto's it should a broken be broken system still it's not as good as it will be most like systems, everything else the main chains, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, are, are fairly good. The chains are good. The infrastructure mm. that allows people to access those chains are broken. Yeah, that sounds about right. Which is still like the the final, like the, the little ray of hope that I still have. It's like the chains are still functioning. Everything is working great. All of the tech is still being built. All the builders are still here. It's just, it's a rough day for the, the top th- layer, the, the surface but I, layer. Of but also the people that own those exchanges and the power concentration of power at those exchanges to make these decisions is too concentrated. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I think that the future will still have leaders, of course. I think this new paradigm, this new web, you know, people call it web three, whatever they were walking into, it's still going to have leaders, but it should be more decentralized. What do you think the future looks like? Separation of church and state between like an Alameda research and an FTX. Yeah. That almost feels like that was illegal. It feels like it would have been illegal were cryptocurrencies considered assets. If they were regulated as if they were a bank and like a a fidelity, this would have never been allowed to happen. But because none of this stuff is regulated, it was allowed to happen. And it was was very unfortunate that it was. Yeah. Well, if you ended this song, um, we're just, it's very really just like a therapy session of venting <laughs> of how we feel. Cause I felt like I had to talk about it and it was playing out in real life. I literally couldn't talk to anyone while it was happening. A lot of scrolling. Today. It was a lot of scrolling. Um, and I think we'll have updates. Maybe we'll do another show this week. This was an emergency press conference version um, of this show. And honestly, I feel sad today. Like I it's feel sad day. for a lot of people. It's and- a tough day for the space. But what's nice is, I mean, in, in a good way, Binance and CZ was kind of the savior. Like now if you have funds in S or FTX, you'll likely be able to withdraw. I mean, I don't love it. That's um, okay. But at least people aren't going to get totally screwed, we hope. Yeah. Um, well, they're screwed at least by their holdings positions right now. Because yeah. Everything's true. down. So. You might not want to withdraw it anyway. It's not worth it anyway, anymore. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's, that's been the, the observation, the, uh, the state of the union, if you will, of crypto. Um, take care of yourself out there. Good luck and Godspeed. Good luck and Godspeed. Till next time. So rough.